In this video I thought I'd uh, run through my pond build process. Uh, unfortunately I haven't got much uh, video footage as when I built this pond I never ever thought I'd be doing a YouTube channel so but I did take lots of pictures so we'll run through those. I will narrate over the top of them. Uh, hopefully you won't get bored by my voice rabbiting on. Uh, so sit back, enjoy and I'll catch you in a bit. Right so the uh, first thing to decide was what shape and size we wanted. I marked it out using a piece of rope just to get the rough shape and as you see in the picture I then took the, the uh, removed the turf and uh, that was then now it's time to start digging. Unfortunately as I started digging I come across a bit of a problem I actually started to hit uh, lots of bedrock and, and solid stone so unfortunately the shape and size had to change as I was going along so it uh, unfortunately wasn't as big as I initially wanted I had to make the pond a bit shorter. You can see I had um, ended up with the shelf again this is due to bedrock and this was as biggest the biggest I could actually get I couldn't do any more with it which I'm, I was a little disappointed in, but it was what I was left with. I then went on to um, dig out the bottom drain and as you can see in this picture uh, I went down it took me in fact it's about a whole weekend just to dig enough room to get the bottom drain and the pipe working up to the filter house I had to use a breaker and like I say it took virtually the whole weekend once it was in place I leveled it up using a spirit lever got it nice and level it meant it was nice and secure and it was all solvent welded in place uh, if you look at this picture you can actually see a smaller pipe to the side of the 4 inch pipe and uh, this is for the air uh, as you can see in this picture I actually taped over the the opening for the bottom drain this was just to stop any debris and rubbish falling into the drain itself and getting in the pipe and as I fill it full of water it's just going to go straight into the filter and cause a blockage. Once this was all done and I was happy with it I set it in concrete to give it extra stability and a nice firm base as I said it is sitting, actually sitting on the bedrock so it's not going to move at the bottom I just didn't want it moving side to side so I set it in concrete. If you look in the top of the picture at the top you'll see is the actual shelf that I had to put in uh, as I said I didn't really want the shelf initially but with the bedrock that was there I actually put the shelf in. This actually helps out in the end because I did want lilies or I do want lilies which I ended up with and this was actually a perfect shelf to put them on. I then moved on to the block work and, and fitting some of the pipe work in. As you can see I only went a single block put on edge. Um, the reason for this is that I, I didn't like flat flat like most people do when they build a pond. I did it a uh, single block edge because I'm actually cladding it in uh, Derbyshire stone which is quite thick. It's in the area there's abundance of it and we had a, I had a load in the garden so it was perfect for me to do that. You'll see that later on in a different picture uh, as we get to it. I also added uh, a bit of rebar uh, to it just to, I thought I'd need that for a bit of extra strength around it but I didn't put that much in because when it came to it with the amount of Derbyshire stone I was putting on how thick it was I, I honestly didn't need that much of the rebar. I also put the pipe work in uh, ready to the skimmer. Uh, there's two returns from the skimmer. You can see the first one there on the right uh, moving along there's a tap so it can reduce the flow between either one then it's moving on uh, to the second one. Uh, once the block of work was finished I then moved on to installing the skimmer. Uh, as you can see I went for this one it's an Awazi, I think it's how you say, how to say it, Awazi Biosis skimmer. It is quite a large um, skimmer. I did look at lots of different skimmers, uh, open mouth, different ones. The reason I went for this one it was actually the one I actually found with the largest basket and uh, the property I live in which is the cottage it is surrounded by a lot of trees so obviously in autumn that time of year I do get a lot of leaves in the pond and I just, to be honest I don't think uh, one of the smaller ones would have actually coped with the amount of debris that goes in the pond and I'd have been emptying it two three four times a day but with this one I actually ended up emptying it once a day once every other day. I uh, then moved on to the stone cladding as you can see it is quite uh, thick cladding, thick stone and there's about two inches of mortar at least between the stonework and the block work so it's quite sturdy that's when I decided not to put any more rebar in because I think it would be enough 
Uh, and unfortunately in this picture that's not a glass of lager, it is just a glass of pop. When most of the stonework was done I then put a, a layer of sand in the base just to give it a bit of extra protection and cover from any rock sticking through. Uh, also just to put a bit of I also put a bit of a slope on it so it sent any stuff more towards the bottom drain. Then can the underlay. When using a pond underlay, if you use a blowtorch and quickly melt the edges and press them together, it helps bond it, a bit like a bit of glue really, and helps keep them in place. Just work your way around nice and steady. Uh, I did go for a double layer of underlay, just to give you that extra protection over the whole pond and protect any sharp edges away. Uh, moving on to fitting the liner, I decided to get the best quality liner I could. I know there are a lot of cheaper options out there, cheaper liners and such, but this isn't something I wants to skimp on. So I know I was on a budget, but I wanted to get the best I could. So I went for this one, it was a Gordon Lowe Firestone pond liner. Uh, it has got a lifetime guarantee. I don't know how I'd claim on that, but at the end of the day, it was the best one I could, uh, I could get. In this picture, I fitted the bottom drain seal and cut into the, the expensive liner. I'd say this is probably the scariest part of the whole build. Uh, I watched lots of YouTube videos and in the end, honestly, there was nothing really to worry about. It was a lot easier than I thought. Um, just make sure you have everything you need to hand. Take your time. Use a good sealant. I used a uh, gold label, which I highly recommend. It's a really good sealant. Uh, some people use just silicon, which does them fine, but I highly recommend the gold label. I didn't just use it on the liner, uh, I also used it on the flexi pipe. When I put the hose towel in, just put a little smear around the hose towel as I put it into the flexi pipe, put the clips on, and it really helps give it a good seal. Uh, as a tip, if you put a cloth in the bottom drain, it does stop any debris falling in. If you look at the picture, there's actually some bits of sand and stuff fell in, but that caught it and it stopped it going down into the falling into the pipe work. As it happens, I, it did actually help me stop losing a screw. As you see, I'm screwing the um, seal onto it there, and I did drop a screw. And if the rag wasn't here, I may have been struggling to get it out further down the pipe. Uh, please remember to take it out first before you put the uh, lid on, the, the top on. It, you don't want it sticking down the pipe, any bits of rag getting stuck in there and then I put the diffuser on in place to complete it all done look fantastic once I'd fitted the seal to the bottom drain it was time to move on to some of the pipe work in this picture uh, you can see there's the uh, inlet into the the filter house from the bottom drain there's a four inch pipe um, the four inch pipe I used from the bottom drain all the stuff you can't see I use sweat bends this just helps a little bit more with flow and when I do need to clean the um, bottom drain out it will help again to put your bone rods down or my jet wash if needed when it comes to cleaning uh, I put if you look down there there's the four inch pipe with the end cap I put that on there as sort of like an inspection part I suppose but that will help to put the bone rods down or if, as I said, if I need to put my jet wash down, it's somewhere so I can gain access to it. It's, I felt, thought this would be the easiest way to do it, rather than get, actually getting into the pond, removing the diffuser, and trying to clean it out that way, because trust me, nobody wants to see this in a swimsuit. Uh, also, if you look at that, you'll see there's a bag on a pipe. That is the airline into the pond. I put a bag on it, again, just because I was messing around with all sorts of rubbish around there. I didn't want anything falling down into the pipe work to block it up. And you can just see there, there is a the top of the four inch uh, ball valve. I put a four inch ball valve there because I wanted to isolate the pond from the filter house. It is gravity fed partly into the filter house. So the pipe going in is gravity fed to the pump and then it's pumped into the easy pod. Uh, I just put the ball valve there just so I can isolate the pond off completely if there's any problems or need to do any maintenance in the filter house. Because the easy pod was going to be gravity fed back to the, the pond, which is the return, I needed to build a table 
to uh, rise it off the ground. Uh, so in these few pictures you'll see here, I decided to do it out of um, three by two box section. I wanted a, a really sturdy table for it um, to take the weight because it's going to hold approximately 80 litres of water just in the easy pod. So I, I needed something substantial to uh, take the weight of it. I put adjustable feet on the bottom just to give you that fine adjustment because the crown wasn't completely 100% level and that gave me just the little bit of fine adjustments I needed just to get it nice and level. Um, this is the final table all completed and painted up. I then put it in place into where the filter house was going to be just so I know it fitted fine and everything where I needed. If you look on the left hand side you'll see a manhole cover. This was actually perfect inside the filter house for me. Somewhere to when I clean the easy pod, I've got a pipe running from the uh, waste outlet straight down the drain. Due to the size restraints of the filter house and the positioning, I couldn't just go to somewhere like BEQ or wherever and, uh, and buy a shed off the shelf. I actually had to have one built, custom built to the size I needed. Um, and this is it being installed. Once the filter shed was uh, in place, it was time to connect all the pipe work up to, and install the easy pod. You can see all the pipe works um, now completed into the filter house. Uh, the airline is now fitted in completely in place through into the filter house and I've fitted the return from the easy pod. Once the pipe work and the shed had all been completed, uh, I decided to paint it as it didn't match the cottage, I went for the nice grey, so it just matches the surroundings. Once all the pipe work and the filter house was in place, it was time to fill the pond. It was that freezing October day when I just got round to doing this, so my toes went numb pretty quick. Um, I just filled it nice and slowly as it was filling up. I was working my way around the pond, getting the creases out the bottom of the pond, and when it got the bottom was done, it started to fill up the sides, I started to fold it, removing as many creases as I could as I went round. When the water level got up just below the skimmer, it was time to fit the face plate to the skimmer. As I'd already done the bottom drain, I did feel a lot more confident this time in fitting the base plate to the skimmer and cutting into the, again, expensive liner. Uh, as I said, I was a lot more confident, so again, I just took my time, used the gold label sealant, which again, I highly recommend. I had everything I needed to hand, and again, I just took my time, nice and steady. I wasn't in no rush because the water wasn't going to reach the skimmer anytime soon, because as I said, I was feeling nice and slow to get the creases out. As I said previously, I went for this skimmer due to the size of the skimmer basket. As you can see, it's quite a large skimmer basket here. Uh, just under the basket itself, you will probably can't see it there, but there is a 10,000 litre an hour pump, which returns by to the two returns I mentioned previously. So if you look at that flexi pipe at, pipe at the bottom, that's the returns to the pond. In the right hand side of the basket, you'll see a 90 degree elbow uh, connected to a bulkhead. I fitted this as an overflow to the pond. Um, if we have a heavy downpour it will stop the pond overflowing and that yellow pipe it's connected to goes straight down to a drain. I didn't solve them while well, the 90 degree on, I left it unsold, soldered so I can actually alter the height of the water as and when needed. If I want it higher for whatever reason I can just alter that pipe and it lowers it down. I have got a trickle in system uh, in the filter house so I got a constant uh, slow trickle of water so it's do my temp at 10 or 20 percent water changes um, throughout the week and if so it's straight into the pond and it trickles out through this straight into the drain. Now it's time to fit the electrics into the filter house I ran a mains cable from the fuse box into the filter house um, I am quite proficient in most DIYs um, but when it comes to electrics, I, I didn't want to mess around with straight from the uh, the mains power straight to the filter house. As you know, 
did with water and moisture in the air. So I, that part I did get an electrician in, a fully qualified electrician to do that part for me and he fitted it into the fuse box into a uh, circuit breaker and he ran it into the filter house for me. Uh, the rest of the stuff in the filter house I did myself. I was more than confident to do that. But it, So if you're not 100% with electrics, please don't mess about. It is that obviously can be quite dangerous, so if you're not sure, get advice or get somebody in to do it. Uh, as I said, I ran into the filter house into the uh, five gang switcher box I used here. I also installed a twin three pin waterproof socket in inside the filter house and I use that for uh, the pond vacuum, jet wash, things like that if I need it. Uh, I also fitted the pump electrics. Um, I fitted a 10,000 litre an, uh, an hour variable pump. I went for the uh, Aquaforte DM Vario. I highly, highly recommend a variable pump and the Aquaforte, I've had no problem with it at all. Uh, so I highly recommend these. It gives you so much control over the flow in, into your pond and then through your filters. It, it really is a good bit of kit to have. To, and to be honest, I wish I'd fitted one of these on the skimmer as well. I said I just fitted a basic um, 10,000 litre pump on that one and it wasn't variable. I wish I had it done. Uh, I connected all the electrics to the EasyPod, which is for the uh, EasyPod UV on it. Um, I also fitted a three stage dechlorinator. I went for the, um, the 20 inch dechlorinator um, with three um, baskets on it. This is for my trickle in, trickle out system. I connected a hose to it, which I fitted a tap in the filter house so I can control. So I just keep running out to the tap outside. There's, a, there's actually a tap and a pipe running into the filter house, then it runs into my dechlorinator. And I trickle it back into my filter system from there. Now that everything was been installed, the pipe work, electrics, etc., it was time for the main testing of the pump, pipe work, things like that. Um, so first of all, I turned on the main pump to the filter. I'm uh, testing for leaks to and from the filter, obviously the inlet. Make sure the connections are fine there and the return pipe and thankfully everything was fantastic no leaks at all next came the skimmer test the pump and again checking for leaks that I could find I again not a problem everything went great on that running perfect and lastly to test is the air I testing the pump and the pipe work that I could see Everything was fine and see how the diffuser was uh, working. As you can see, it's all up and running fine and looks great. Uh, unfortunately, a couple of days later, I did notice that the diffuser, it didn't look like it was working quite right. The air was coming out one side more than the other. Um, I actually bought the bottom drain and all my part work from JBR Plastics. I highly recommend them. Absolutely fantastic company to, to deal with. Uh, I contacted them, told him what I, I, I wanted, and he sent everything out. Didn't have to mess with the imperial metric, making things fit. Whatever he sent out, fitted all, all fitted perfectly. Yeah, so I contacted them, uh, told them the problem with the diffuser, no hassle at all. He said not a problem. He sent one out, a replacement out immediately. I think it came the next day, free of charge, no postage. Absolutely fantastic. All I had to do was um, replace the one that was actually in the pond. And unfortunately, the only way to do that was to actually get in the pond and dive down. And as I said a bit earlier, it, it was an October day when I started to fill the water. So this was probably about 12, 13, maybe even if I was lucky, 14 degrees. And as you can see from this picture, it was a bit of a shock. And the last thing to do is finish off the stonework. Um, and then start on the capping stones. Uh, the capping stones I used are, were grey. Um, I chose this colour because they match the slabs I'm going to use to complete the patio area. Once all the um, coping stones were on, or the capping stones, I boxed in the 
pipe work as you can see at the side of the shed and painted that to match the shed and in the winter uh, this box itself I can open it up go and access to it and I insulate it to help me with frost protection and stuff in the winter well I hope you found that interesting uh, it's not meant to be an instruction video in any way uh, this is just me showing you my process of building my pond if it helped in any way giving you any ideas and tips for your pond build then that's great but if I was to give you one tip or any tips it'd be to plan 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 and when you finish planning plan again because no matter what happens it's gonna change and you'll have to plan some more and my second tip would be to get a bottom drain if you can put in a bottom drain you can get aftermarket uh, retrofit bottom drains if you haven't got a bottom drain but in my opinion that they're not as good as having a, a proper bottom drain you may end up regretting it so if you can at the start of your build go for a bottom drain Hopefully you found this interesting and you got something from it. If you have, that's fantastic. Uh, so please like, share and subscribe. Make a comment if you want. And I'll see you on the next one. Skimmer basket. I forgot what I'm going to say straight away. <laughs> now it was time to fit the electrics into the filter house. I ran a mains that uh, power lead from the um, the main filter. Now that everything was connected, pipe work, electrics, etc., it was. Uh, and lastly, thing to check was the air. Again, this is the first. There's no way of actually checking for leaks on this one. Uh, it's uh, going to go through to the pond. You just got to hopefully there's enough airflow going through. Uh, I forgot what I'm going to say now.